um, so many different wonderful angles to all of these questions and to some of these terms, especially some of the new terms that Dr. And Ashley and I have been coining. So it was super interesting. Dr. Mm -hmm. Ashley and I read this over a couple of times when you were um, the person that asked the question talked about the emotional dieting as wow like sometimes i hide my feelings from others and i also hide my eating behavior from yeah, others and yeah. what a profound and interesting right. angle um mm -hmm. so that is just super super curious and yes that absolutely would would make sense so that's something for us to kind of think about and i think mm -hmm. super expand on in future kind of video casts Mm -hmm. I, I want to explain a little bit more kind of what we were talking about with just kind of how we were thinking originally about the term yeah. emotional dieting. And mm -hmm. we were looking at it as mostly not so much relative to others, although you very wisely put out mm -hmm. there in a great way that it could apply. But we were looking at it more at your own relationship with your emotions and your mm -hmm. own relationship with food. Okay, so kind of coming from this, I need to restrict the emotions or suppress the emotions that I judge as bad emotions, very similar to I can't allow myself to eat the foods that I deem bad foods, right? right? right. And how both of those set you up for the need to continue to escalate, the need mm -hmm. associated with the feeling and or the need associated with the desire or the craving or the physical need for that food. And then it ends up feeling like it erupts and overtakes you, mm -hmm. right? And then it goes into either a binge episode with food or feeling overwhelmed or anxious mm -hmm. or depressed, right? Or sometimes yeah. dissociated yeah. because emotions kind of come up in this um, compelled way. Like really intense. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's one of the main pieces that we talked about with this concept of emotional dieting. So, so mm -hmm. being able to eventually, and that's a big eventual, mm -hmm. right? Be able to embrace all emotions without judgment, with neutrality, with curiosity, exploring what it's telling you, exploring what it's needing, and eventually being able to step in and respond to that emotion so that you can meet the need and then it can naturally dissipate, which it will. Right. And, and then the parallel that it is the same thing with food. Mm -hmm. Truly, 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 if we allow ourselves to eat, what we are really wanting when we really want it, mm -hmm. we can eat it, be satisfied, and then the craving goes away. It's not going to keep haunting you. All right. So that's what we were primarily paralleling. Mm -hmm. okay? But this was a really interesting kind of direction that you took it in. Yeah. You want to say more about that? Yeah, I think I, I love it. I think it was another layer that expands this because to me, when I read that, I was thinking, wow, you know, that makes a lot of sense. If when, when people are dieting or have this um, good, bad relationship with food, you know, if you go out with people, mm -hmm. right, and you have kind of this binge eating part, mm -hmm. if you go out with people, you're going to eat quote unquote normal, right? You're going to order a normal portion. You're going to order a normal entree, whatever normal is. Of course, I'm using that in air quotes. Um, and, and that can be then a setup if you're feeling deprived, if it's not what you wanted, if you're not full, mm -hmm. it can absolutely be a setup then to go home and in private binge, mm -hmm. right? And, and really seeing those parallels with the same thing with emotions. If you're out with others, or not even out, but if you're interacting with others and the goal is to look fine mm -hmm. or normal or balanced or in control, whatever it is, and that's actually not how you're genuinely feeling, then it of course makes sense that when you get home, right, it's almost like there's an emotional binge that happens where the depression takes over, the loneliness, the anxiety, the hopelessness, the fear, the pain, the anger, and, and it's so big that it, it, it's like that emotional binge episode. So I just thought this was another fabulous extension of, of just that concept and that cycle of dieting and binging, whether we're talking about food or whether we're talking about feelings. And whether we're talking about intrapersonal relationship yeah. or 
interpersonal relationship. That's you know, right. that's yeah. why this is just so cool because you know this this um, community member you know talked about that same parallel process that you, yeah. as you just described, right? Mm -hmm. Doing it with others and then and then doing it within yourself as well. Mm -hmm. As far yeah. as you know, thwarting those emotions, hiding them, you know, all that kind of stuff that that we just talked about. Right. So yeah, really, yeah. really interesting. And the solution to both is going to be coming back to that place of intuition, mm -hmm. authenticity. And, you know, we talk so much about approaching your inner child and these wounded parts of you with curiosity and compassion, but darn it, it's exactly what we ask you to do with food. Mm -hmm. Approach your, um, you know, nutritional desires and needs with curiosity and compassion and, and make space for all. So it's just a really... Um, you know, to be able to become an intuitive eater, I want you to become an intuitive feeler as well. And for there to always be authenticity in how you nourish your body and how you nourish your soul. Yeah. And one of the things that we didn't really flesh out last time, I think we both probably thought that it was pretty evident, but I'd like to just take maybe a minute as we're wrapping yeah. up. But these two parallel processes that we're talking about with you know thwarting emotions and thwarting food desires and cravings you know when you thwart this right and you thwart this both of these lead to this intersection of binge eating absolutely okay so they they are not only parallel processes but then they end up intersecting in the very behavior that most everybody in this community wants to change right. Right? right so being able to really see that i just wanted to kind of flesh that out a little bit more that both of those unnatural processes play into each other you know? absolutely and then, Which, and then going to binge eating yeah and and that really um comes back to then why you have to work on the emotional and psychological, but you can't do that at the exclusion of working on the nutritional. Yeah. And the reverse is true as well. You cannot just focus on the food, as we have said a bazillion times, without focusing on the emotional and psychological. Both have to be there. And then a healthy dose of you know enjoyable, mindful movements that you're really connected to your body. Um, you know, All of that together is what then really creates that complete full recovery experience. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. Well, I think that's a wrap for today's yeah. Q&A. We are so thrilled for our new members that have joined us. Thank you Wonderful. so much and welcome. Mm -hmm. Continue to spread the word. If you guys mm -hmm. find this valuable, please share it with others. We've just gotten so much good feedback and mm -hmm. we just want to get this information out to as many people as possible. We're really on a platform to change the way the world responds to their emotional self, their body self, definitely to get people to stop dieting and to mm -hmm. ultimately have an accepting, loving, and compassionate relationship with themselves. Yeah, 